So I'm here with Joe Piddington. He's the filmmaker behind Wargaming the Movie, a feature documentary, fascinating feature documentary. Welcome to London. Thank Welcome you very to much. You. Congratulations right. on the nominations. Thank you very much. So, um, brief synopsis, please. And can you tell us why you decided to put this really interesting film together? Uh, yeah, so Miniature Wargaming Movie is a feature documentary film about the miniature industry. It covers the history behind how it is what it is today, um, but the core of it is we follow four personal journeys um, that, and we see how it impacts their lives in different ways, and that's the brief synopsis. But we have a British uh, war veteran, we have a guy called Chris who um, left um, working at Games Workshop and Mantic and started up his own company. Um, so now this is the game, that got, I, I shot it, I should yeah. point this out earlier. He's the guy that's done his own game, isn't he? Yes. Yeah. Now, yeah, you mentioned earlier, I didn't mean to talk to him about Games Workshop, but then I didn't yeah. think it was relevant because yeah. he wanted to talk about what he was doing. But yeah, sorry, do carry on. Yeah, so uh, he worked for those companies and a few others, uh, Tall Gaming being one of them, and he basically decided he was going to set up his own company, um, thing, left yeah. his job, obviously all the security of that, you know, he's got... Uh, no, mortgage, uh, mortgage and family, and, yeah, yeah. and all that that he's got to support. So it was about him developing a gateway game that would be hit a larger audience instead of miniature war gamers that would be board gamers and get them into his rule set and into his product range and then the other two guys who follow are two lifelong friends who basically travel all the way to Norway to compete um, in a big tournament basically um, and we see kind of it, the film is shot as a process so it's you know it starts two years ago and then we follow them through over two years and see how their lives develop and how it impacts their lives in different ways. So, yeah, thank you, no, thank you. And before we get on to the background, the same you said earlier, which really I'd like to touch on again, because this is important to people that are making films and this is about the investment, which is, people don't need to know what the investment is, I, I know, but the point I would like to make and you elaborate on is, if you're gonna do it, um, People that watch this are not going to want to hear this, right? But you're not going to say you need to spend the money, right? Yeah. We're not talking you getting necessarily huge amounts. Well, it seems that quite a lot of this is a lot, but you want people to be able to buy into this. And I don't just mean they've yeah. got to be interested in it, they want to look at it and they want it to look good, yeah? Yes. Yeah. And that's so, the so if you explain the mistake of why you must do this if possible. Yeah. yeah. So, so you can make a documentary on any budget like you can go and go out and film something but because of what i was dealing with and because this is a one of the, like no one's ever done a documentary on this industry to the scale before and you knew this because we should point you researched this, yeah, yeah 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 so I, I researched this all um and figured out that there was a market that and as a hobbyist myself i wanted to see that film and because i knew what i expected as you know as a hobbyist I knew that the film had to be delivered in a certain way, and that involved spending money. Um, and we could have done it. Yeah, annoyingly, and that's the thing. Like we, you, you, we could have done it on a cheaper budget, but it wouldn't have been the film it is now. Um, it wouldn't have the scale it is now. You know, we we filmed in six different countries and interviewed people from and this all is different the thing, walks of life. Because yeah, and it's not just the filming. You got to organise the travel yep. and the infrastructure, the logistics, and the post-production. Post-production is where, yeah, and this is not going to be. No. It's going to cost money. I'm yes. afraid. You yeah. know. Um, but you've had, I know you've had interest, and I love the film, and I love. The, for me, I mean, it's my kind of thing, really. You know. Um, but again, uh, picking up on something you said a while ago, I was really surprised about the figures that more females become, which is a great thing. It's going yes. up. Was it 10 percent, around 40 percent of these? Y yeah. So do, yeah. So d different on d events like now because of you know it's a lot more popular now to be into things you know things like big bang being on the tv it's cool been, now to it's be cool yeah, yeah. yeah and you know and it's made it a lot bigger and things like dungeons and dragons really help the industry games workshops help the industry a lot of these huge board game companies and it's become more of a family thing people are slowly coming away from playing video games and you know being able to go to events that have oh God, a, a family real friendly. 3D yeah, thing. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. And it, the, the great thing about the hobby, and you see in the film, is it, it's used in so many different ways that a lot of people wouldn't necessarily, from just looking you know, at it or going, oh, I, I'm into wargaming, um, they might instantly judge it, but it's used in so many different ways, and it's like any other hobby. Um, and that's why it's so great, and that's why the film's so interesting, because it dives a lot deeper and, and shows things that, and covers stories that I think a lot of people 
or if they looked at it just off the off chance, they might think, oh, it's going to be boring, it's going to be about... Yeah, and it's anything know. but, because yeah. actually the, the way Joe's made this is he, he deals behind the... I think it's the five sort of individual stories. Is yeah, it five? yeah, so it's four, four, four and then the history. Story, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, and it's, it's quite, it is interesting because you get to learn about mm. the struggles, the trials and tribulations, why they came into it, you know, it's the outcome, or in some cases, not necessarily the outcome, it's some one of the two of them still rolling on, of course. Yes. You know? How did you become involved? Because you, you've made film before, but how did you get, I think, and then this subject in particular, why did it Yeah, so you? this is my first proper feature. Right, yeah. So I've done things for a long time in video base, but it was really just for other companies and stuff like that. But this is my first proper feature, and I am self-taught. So for me, it was doing a lot of research. And that's the thing I would say to anyone, like, if you're making a film, doesn't matter what it's about, you need to do your research. And I wouldn't have been able to do this film without doing the research and meeting the people and talking to them beforehand and finding out things that I never knew. Um, so when I came up with the original script, a lot of it got scrapped because it was just a naivety because I didn't know as much as I know And hang on, now. so you, because this is a very interesting, because yeah. doc, from documentary make, filmmakers talk about script is not that you, I know it does happen, but yeah. often they're not, are they? No. So when you say script, do you mean literally, or are we talking about storyboarding script? What, so what? I, I would say script when it comes to the history. So, oh, right, okay. So, no, so right. obviously with the character development, I knew what they wanted to achieve so I had a rough guide and I knew where I wanted to film where we were going to be so you kind of have a rough guide for that but the script was really the history base so I needed to know so we I got together and I met Henry Hyde that is a leading author and he wrote the Wargaming Compendium that took him four and a half years to put together and um, it's been published and it's just amazing it's basically like the bible and i met him and just he blew me away and without his input onto the film you know it wouldn't be what it is especially the history side and that was really important to me to get it correct um because it is very very important so yeah, yeah scripting course. scripting that and even even the documentary side like i knew roughly where i wanted to go i wasn't sure exactly how the arcs were going to end up <coughs> but i knew what we you know i knew that i wanted to meet different people and they had to have, I didn't want to just have every single person was going on the same journey, so they were all going to, you know, no, they were all friends and they were yeah. all going to go to an event. Yeah. I wanted to have different points of view and just highlight how it can be used in different ways. And that's the that's core thing of the film, is I want to try to destigma a little bit of what people assume the industry is or the hobby is. Um, and that's why I chose carefully the people that are in the film. So you, um, you could have easily made this all in the UK. I mean, it wouldn't have been a yes. problem. But I, I suspect the reason you, to do that, you wanted to broaden the horizons of people that might be watching it. Because I suppose you would have been not found out as long where people have gone, yeah, great. OK, I'm in Holland. And like, yeah. you know, where's that point of view? Yeah, and w so one of the key things was I wanted some of the, some of the better known people in the industry live in different countries so when we went over to Canada, Canada and filmed with Mini Wargaming they have the biggest YouTube channel and they have a subscription based website and I really wanted they bought something different so every single person in the film the reason they're in the film and made the film is because they bought something different interesting and yeah, yeah and something and something different instead of just interviewing loads of people that had businesses I wanted to show how this industry is used in different ways so you know things like YouTube you know these two guys have set a business they have quite a few employees it's a lovely facility I believe they're spending over a million dollars now on their new facility over in Canada where people can go to and that all came through YouTube and through subscription based so they put out one video for free Incredible, and one it? through subscription so if you want to watch both of them you've got to subscribe to the channel where they make money um, and then you've got Beasts of War that basically are a news outlet that just cover the industry so it was all these different things. So I don't know. I, I mean, I, I was yeah. kind of quite a little bit into it, but, but yeah. now I'm like, all this sort of stuff. Is, is, yeah. is, but then again, it's the internet, isn't it? Yes. Driving along. Exactly. And that's the thing with the film. Like, there's so many people I wanted to interview, but I wanted to show all the different ways it's used. Yeah. And it's not just this little niche thing that, you know, one company like Games Workshop is. You know, they, they're an amazing company and they've done some great things for the industry, but they're not the the last yeah, word. Yeah, you know, that's not it. And, it and, and that's what I wanted to highlight with the film is to show how it's used in so many different ways. Brilliant. So. Joe, that's it. That's right. Wonderful. Brilliant. Kept it Thank short and sweet. Much. No, that's right. brilliant news.
and a brilliant film. Thank you so much. Thank you.